Hello. Good morning. It's 11 o'clock. I think it's time for my slot. Uh, welcome to the TFMA Social Lounge. Um, as you can see, my name is Sandra McDowell. Um, I'm Head of Communications at Amaze. And for those of you who haven't come across this, we're a leading marketing, technology, digital business. Um, about £12 million turnover. We work for brands like Unilever, Asics, Toyota, Canon and Coca-Cola. And today I'm going to walk you through a case study of a piece of work we did for Coca-Cola. So I'm not here to educate you. You're probably more experienced in social than me. But what I want to show you is just some of the techniques we've used in a program that you might find useful. So the topic, which is a bit of a mouthful, I'm afraid, is using sponsorship of London 2012 to cross the digital divide internally. So what that actually means is this is about using social media with an internal communication spectrum. So what Coke wanted us to do was actually make sure that we put social into an Intel comms program in order to make their business a little bit stronger. So I'll explain all of that. Um, the three reasons why we were hired for the job was we were applying technology, creativity, but more importantly, content. And you'll see lots of examples of that when I walk through it. Can everyone hear me OK? Yeah. So forgive me, I'm going, to, um, I'm going to walk you through a presentation in, in Prezi and I've sat in your shoes before now and it made me sick. So if anybody's feeling a bit queasy, just call out. So this program, as I say, is about social and content. And what we didn't do here was choose a channel, a social channel and say, let's build our, our program on this. But what you'll find is we've used a multitude of social channels, but integrated them based on the use of the employee. So what I talk about is um, using channel that's almost suited to your stream of consciousness. So where we wanted to give have people give us a quick response, we were using Twitter, and where it was more measured, we were using blogs, or people just wanted to express themselves visually, we were using Flickr. So it's, not, it's channel neutral, I guess. So just a little bit about, um, about the program itself and who, who was working at Coca-Cola. So you get a measure of our strategy here, but then some really nice tactics to take away. So forgive me. For what you've got in the company, um, They've got a mix of manufacturing people and office base, so 5,500 employees was who we had to talk to, across 22 sites, all in the UK. And one third of them were on what we call on the line, so they were in factories bottling Coca-Cola. third of them were salespeople on the road or merchandisers, and another third are what we call on the network. So they're basically sitting in offices. So that's when I talk about crossing the digital divide, um, the ones who were sitting at their desks were easy because they were sitting at their desks. But this whole program was how do we reach people who are out in other parts of the business. So our challenge from the client was to make their business stronger through this Olympic sponsorship by engaging employees with the plans that they had for the Games Time sponsorship. So it wasn't simply a case of, you know, let's turn up at Olympic Park and, and merchandise from Coca-Cola. It was how they were going to make their business stronger. Now, in internal communications, you can, you can simply tell that. But in social, we wanted to make sure that people engaged with us so that we were sure that they got the message. And alongside that, we wanted to make people feel proud to work for Coca-Cola, which I guess is, is easy, but inspired to do better work so that that meant there was a business benefit from that inspiration. And the last point, which is really where I'm presented to you about this point, is how do you transform a business's use of digital communications? So our response was to, that's um, obviously not the topic for him. Um, our response was to create a single source of information. So when you've got a program that's sitting alongside what is business as usual, we felt you needed to drive people to that single source. And I'll tell you what that is in a second. But a source for information and for interaction. So rather than being something on a website, something happening that the chief exec was saying, bringing everything onto a single source, creating a regular flow of editorial news. So the news was coming about Coca-Cola only, so in relation to the Olympics, but that had human interest stories within it. And then we wanted to create what we called get involved moments, so reasons for people to engage with us. So if you like, our editorial was the always on, but we talked about get involved moments where, where we had a spike in our activity to draw people to us, and I'll show you examples of that. 
and, and then used the existing internal channels, of which they had a couple of intranets, they had a really good comms team, so how could we get our program to plug into theirs? So um, quite a complex project, but hopefully you'll find quite interesting. So our response we called uh, the Olympic Zone, and the Olympic Zone was um, an intranet, but unlike most intranets I've ever been on, we tried to get it to look like BBC News 24, which is a tall order. Um, and we started it three years ago, which seems a very long way out, but if you remember, there was a Vancouver Winter Olympics in 2010. So what we wanted to do was road test some of our thinking when we had Coke employees working in Vancouver so that any of, we could almost weigh up the appetite for our employees to see if they wanted to follow anybody's tweets or blogs or um, pictures. So we did a tiny pilot in 2010, but then took all the lessons and applied them into this program. And the majority of the work you'll see here is based uh, from January 2012. And don't forget those, those one third on the line, one third on the road, and one third on the network th throughout all this. So I'm just going to show you a little quick fly through of, of the actual program itself. And then what I'll do is a deep dive so you can see elements of that. Um, I'll just tell, oh, I lost my video in there, excuse me. Or is it me? Uh, might not have to throw, show you a fly through there. I seem to have lost that. Um, okay, I'll come back. There are other, don't worry, there's other things in here I can show you. So, um, what we've got is 68% uh, of our employee base registered in our program, and our target was 50. Um, and 3,000 employees engaged. So if you remember, I said there were 5,000 people starting in the employee base, 3,000 engaged with us, and over 100% over of those registered from April. So the journey we took to London 2012 had four elements. So what we wanted to do was make sure that, um, that we were uh, doing four things to our audience. So. The first one was about sharing, and the strategy here was to make sure that people had the opportunity to express themselves. So not every employee is given the chance to do that, so that was the first challenge for us. The second one, if they didn't want to actually contribute in social, how could they spectate? So if there were people in East Kilbride who'd never been on Twitter, we wanted to find a place where they could watch how others were sharing, but they didn't necessarily have to get involved. And the third one was build um, a sense of pride through the people, not just through the corporate brand talking. Um, and then the, the second point was how do we get involved? So this was a really about how to give people a reason to go to the channel. Third one was about news gathering, which I talked about using editorial. And then the fourth one was how do we actually connect people who are in these factories and actually bring what is a digital program to life. So. I'll talk you through sharing first of all. So the first thing we did was um, give people an opportunity to take part, an active part in London 2012. And Coca-Cola were lucky enough to have 78 torch, 78 torch bearer places. So that was one of our tools, if you like, to provide people with opportunities. They've also got um, quite a strong sustainability program in their company. And so we had opportunities where people, it may sound crazy, do you want to go and litter pick today? But actually by litter picking meant that you could meet celebrities um, or actually be at the Olympic Games. So giving people the opportunity to, to recy be recycling volunteers. And then they also had, in any one of the Olympic um, places where the sports were taking place, they had um, merchandisers who were either handing out Coca-Cola bottles or Powerade to athletes coming out of swimming pools, or they were simply merchandising to sell. So what they wanted to do was rather than recruit those people from outside the company, was to actually bring them from within. So our channel was saying to people, do you want to go and work in the venues? So do you remember I said this is a single venue for information? So it would have been easy to recruit people on an HR portal, but we said put them on our portal, and we'll do the recruitment for you. And once we recruit those volunteers, we can then ask them how it feels to be chosen to go and work at the Olympic Park. So that was a really key part of, of sharing and then we created um, what I would call a social media hub so what you've got in here is um, it's a web page but when I talked about being channel neutral and based on that stream of consciousness we had a Twitter feed on one side 
We were using images from Flickr to allow people to gather images, and we were contributing to that, things that we saw we'd add to the Flickr account. We used Chatter, which I'll tell you about in a second. But also, if you want to really draw people in, give them a reason to come here in the first place. So the BBC was telling you where the Olympic torch tour was going to go, but actually we said, well, on day 49, we'll be in Ipswich. So we're trying to make this a turn on your computer and go to this every day. There's a reason to go. So within that... Um, social media hub as I call it, we, we obviously actively promoted it to the company so that people knew to go there. We were encouraging people who were on Twitter already to actually use our at share2012 name. And then we as the agency community managed it. So we were following some Olympians, we were following some broadcast journalists just to get the flow of information. But what was really interesting, we had to go and actually find people who were quite willing to contribute. So one of the ways we did that was to when we had people who, who'd won their chance to be a torchbearer, we actually got their colleagues or their cohorts to, to blog for us. So they were talking about day 48 in Northwich, uh, Norwich, I beg your pardon, and um, just blogging about how it felt to be there. So you didn't have to rely just on Twitter, which is quite quick, but you could get a real, if you were reflecting at the end of the week, you get a real sense of what was going on in the program. The other thing which I don't know, has anybody used Chatter internally? Uh, Salesforce Chatter? It's sort of, um, it's sort of a combination between, I'm sure Chatter will hate me for calling it this, but um, for me it's a combination of Facebook and Twitter, but it's for use in the employee, you know, in uh, enterprise level in, 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 uh, companies. And so what Coca-Cola did was set up a pilot within their business, because they'd never used it before, but with any pilot, you've almost got to give people a reason to go to Chatter. So the reason was invite employees to report or share what they were doing in relation to the Olympic Games. Now, that created an absolute maelstrom of interest, which is great, but for us, a bit daunting. So we just, we just pulled out the best of the best relating to our program and pulled in Chatter into the channel. So the employee could either look at Chatter on their own internet or they could see the best of the best here. If you like, we were curating the best content. Um, the other thing we felt really important, because do you remember that crossing the digital divide? At this stage, bear in mind this was one year ago, not everybody was on Twitter um, or able to blog or use Flickr. So what we gave them were digital training guides to teach them some of those techniques, which may sound alien to you guys, but an awful lot of people said, well, how do I get involved? So just simply giving some lessons, some how-tos, and this was a little, you know, this little fly-through videos that shows you, well, if you want to blog, click here, do this. And that was quite well supported. So the second section is all about uh, what do we do when we ask people to get involved. And I'm going to show you three techniques here. Um, one was about uh, a photo competition. One was a game and another one was a reward scheme. And those were all just creative ideas to give people a reason to go to, um, to our site. So the first one, um, is anybody familiar with what Coca-Cola were doing during the Olympic Torch Relay? They had a program called Move to the Beat, which was uh, Mark Ronson and Katie B were doing a sort of an anthem. Um, basically, we had lots of Coke assets and we wanted to create a celebration for what, what, what we would do with the employee base when, games, when the game started. So we said, well, let's take Coke's known assets already rather than to, to create something new and then apply our own version of it so the employees felt they were getting something special rather than just a hybrid of the external program. So we called this Move to the Alpha Beat. And what Alpha, Move to the Alpha Beat was basically so, creating a socially generated human alphabet um, and then taking those assets that we'd taken from pictures of the employees as alpha, mem, yeah, A to Z, not to Z, not to nine, um, what we were going to do with them uh, was to set it to digital art so that people who, who took part had a chance to view something. So what they simply had to do was create some letters and you could just see some examples there of, of people in their team meetings getting involved with their employee, you know, with their fellow colleagues to turn themselves into A's, P's, Z's, O's. So their level of creativity was fascinating because we gave them some inspiration, but they got on and did it themselves. So we asked them to create the letters and then upload them to the site. And our job was to inspire them. So we went out to them um, and created booths and things when they had company conferences. So we'd say to people, 
come on, you can make an O, you can make a C. You ma if you look at the one on this side, um, two yoga athletes clearly were turning, putting themselves into headstands and creating the later H. So lots of um, fun, really, from the employees. So um, we then turned that into a gallery. So we, we were using a social technique to just get people to tell us which was their favorite. So we put the best of the A's to Z's and the naught to nines and asked people to vote for their favorites. So we came up with our human alphabet. So we then used um, a digital artist, let's hope my video will play this time, to create um, the alpha beat map. So. The rain of the sand and the sun It gives my heart that good, good feeling Could be anywhere, anywhere in the world Okay, so you get a sense of uh, what I was talking about was trying to give people the chance to get involved and the chance to see themselves on a, on a screen. Second idea of three, it was to um, just how we show how we could have some fun. So most of you will have played fantasy football at some time in your lives, perhaps. So we take the, took the principles of um, fantasy football and applied it to London medal tables. So you were asked to pick a team, you were given the opportunity to personalize it, um, and then you're, you were created a digitally generated team which competed in the Olympic Games and as countries won medals, your scores went up and down. So we then created um, a leaderboard which allowed people to go onto the site to check whether their teams were winning alongside the medals. And we know how successful this was, not based on the number of people coming to the site, but we were only releasing medals when official medal ceremonies had happened. So if an athlete had come out of the pool and we knew they'd won gold, the employee base knew that their score would have gone up. And they were ringing us saying, how come I'm not uh, higher up on the leaderboard? But we were doing it officially. But that lag meant that we knew that people were actually really fascinated to see where they were on the scores. And so um, I think the quote that summed up for me was, um, Having a fancy team made London 2012 even more exciting, cheering on another country you wouldn't normally follow. And the inter-team inter rivalry at Coke was fun too. So going back to our objectives, which was trying to engage with our employees, we're just using a really sort of cool, fun way to do that. And the third final one in this section is um, what we call Live Positively. Coca-Cola have got a very strong uh, sense of community and uh, you know, as a company they want people to pay back to their own societies. So um, what they said to us, how can you bring um, live positive commitments to life? So this was uh, running a competition to reward inspirational community achievement outside work in order to win a place to carry the torch. So what we did was put um, your kind of classic comms around any one of these 78 torchbearers. So they had um, pictures, we wrote a bio about them, but when they were actually on the Olympic torch tour, we were taking pictures of them and telling their story. So, um, you know, the feats of a human endeavor were actually people that you knew close to you who'd won this chance, you were going to the site in order to see what they'd done. So next, of my third section is about up to the minute news reporting. And what we wanted to do here was um, use our editorial skills to capture the journey that we were on, um, which if you remember was 2010 to the end of 2012. So the business was going on quite a long journey. So editorial is the best way to, to deliver that, but bring out the human balance the human stories, but with some of the corporate messages. So the way we did that was to use um, kind of news items like it's 100 days to go. Um, and we had a team of journalists internally who were gathering all these stories and working with the client to spot what the next milestones were, logging those on a content calendar. But we also, um, do you remember we were using bloggers? So driving people to, to view the blogs was another editorial technique. 
And we also hired two students because we felt that we needed people sort of on the ground in Olympic Park and at some of the venues. So they, they were recruited simply to be just that, given a, a, a video camera and told to literally go and source some stories. So things like um, wrapping up what the venue operations team had to say through to going deep into one, one part of Coca-Cola's business, which was out in the distribution chain, and seeing what it was like from, from Voltic Park. Um, uh, bird's eye view of Olympic Park before it was filled. Um, and then they did a games time roundup every week. So for those who, who were still working up in East Kilbride, if they didn't have the chance to see what it felt like, the journalists were capturing that. And the other thing about Coca-Cola, we had this expression when we worked with them, there are always an only Coke can do moment in life. And this was one. Coca-Cola sponsored uh, 12 athletes, potential uh, Olympians. And the way we were able to use those was to give them a work placement within Coca-Cola. So should, remember, most of these people have never worked because they've been athletes. So Coke's commitment to them was to say, come and enjoy our workplace, see what you get from it, see what it feels like to work for over a period of weeks in the Coke company. Um, so you get to know the workplace. But equally for the staff, the staff got to know them. So they do lunchtime sessions where they would explain what their journey was like as an Olympian. But we also delivered some powerful lessons from the business on how to actually um, take their delivering their personal best in sport. How can you apply that to internal communications and get people to think about their, their own self and how they'd inspire themselves to do a better job at work? So um, I'll just play a short part of this, but just to show you the sorts of things they were saying. My name is Tom Davis. I'm a GB judo athlete. My name is Stephanie Millward and I'm a Paralympic swimmer. I'm Sharon Laws. I'm a road cyclist. My name is Sophie Johnstone. I'm Claire Strange. I'm a Great Britain wheelchair basketball player. I'm Dave Davis. I'm an Olympic swimmer. There's lots of parallels between business and sport. Obviously setting goals and setting small stepping stones and targets along the way to achieve that. You don't get up early in the morning to go training and then go to do, do three sessions a day where on a normal day you wouldn't without that kind of overall goal. I've been mentally preparing myself for each of my races, seeing myself I'll stop it there because we're just running a little bit short of time, but you get the sense that they were actually showing us, like goal setting is what they do in their careers in sport, but goal setting can be what you do in work. So, so basically two of those 12 athletes, well six were selected and two of them went on to win medals. So we had the luxury of, unfortunately one girl was um, struck with injury, Sophie Johnston. So Sophie was our on the ground reporter, blogging about what her colleagues were doing and tweeting every day to tell us what her, um, what the, where the medal wins. And the final one in my presentation is about how do we cross the digital divide? Now, I guess we're lucky when you work with someone like Coca-Cola, um, we can put in 54 inch screens in factories, but the idea was to try and get content into those factories to allow people to see what we were doing. But on the side, you can see there was a kiosk. So rather than making people come to us, we were giving them a chance to go onto the Olympic zone and see everything in their situation at work. We also, um, used our local ambassadors. So these were people in the factories who were not, not just naturally gregarious people, who were the people who were always shouting or talking about things. So we gave them assets and said, tell your colleagues to go to the site because of XYZ, taught them to blog, taught them to tweet. So they were, if you like, our Olympic magnets. And then, no surprises, the odd uh, prize draw will encourage people to go to sites. Surprise, surprise. Um, we used posters when we had those get involved moments and we used uh, classic marketing techniques. So we'd use emails, put links in the emails, which drew people to the site. And they were probably one of our most effective means to get to people. Um, and then just a quick whiz through what the page looked like in the end. Um, so having areas where you could click to, do, uh, to go into those special areas I was telling about, having quick links and putting Twitter on the homepage so that you didn't have to go into the site to see it, just putting it on the, on the homepage. So, did it work? You saw some of those slides earlier. Our target was 50% of employees to be engaged. We got 68. Um, you can read the stats for yourself. Quite a number of news articles, blogs and pages. 
chat posts, photos, over a thousand tweets only since the start of May, so uh, not bad. But this is the bit for me that, um, do you remember I mentioned that the business wanted to feel like it was stronger, so that 70% of people we surveyed claim they knew more about what, biz what, what the business of Coca-Cola was all about through the program, and that 96% of, of employees felt proud to work for Coca-Cola. Um, that was just a little word cloud of how people felt it was, how was it to go onto the program. So the word that leaps out, which is easy, which isn't often easy in digital. Um, and Paul's quote here, I just thought was, was a lovely sense of, wow, we've done something that has been a success as far as they're concerned. So thank you for listening. I hope it was relevant. Um, I'm here if you need to talk to me. Thank you.